Hi, this is Mike. So today's project is uh, going to be this little mounting plate for a ring light that is that is going to fall on the floor. And so this is going to go around uh, the spindle and mount up here. I saw uh, one of Mark Pressling's videos a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. He he picked up some of these. He called them Angel Eyes off of eBay. And I, I grabbed, uh, that's a great idea because there's no shadows and they're cheap. They were like $5, something like that. Um, he 3D printed a mount to go on here. I don't have a 3D printer, <laughs> but I got lots of scrap aluminum. Um, so what we're gonna do is I've marked this one out because this is the second try because the first one, I accidentally tried to bore it to this diameter instead of this diameter and I scrapped it. So we're gonna try again this time and get it right, hopefully. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, what's going to happen is we'll bore this out and then this is where it's going to end up being cut. So I'm just going to mark it and cut it in the bandsaw and then file it and sand it, you know, whatever, to make it fit. Uh, this hole, this mark right here, is going to mount a post that's going to go up into the machine right there. Oh, well, is that in the frame? Um, so yeah, this hole is going to have a little post mounted to it. There's a hole right here in the uh, head, so that it'll we'll just put it in there and tighten the set screw. So this will end up being mounted here, and then we'll uh, hook the light on here with I don't know, probably epoxy, some kind of adhesive. I might use double-sided tape. I've got some really uh, good double-sided tape, or Worst case, I'll just put a few zip ties around it. Either way, that's how it's going to get. Um, so the only even sort of critical dimension, <laughs> other than if you make it, you know, 10 millimeters too big, uh, <laughs> is this has to be at least big enough to clear the spindle, but not too big. So the light is like 3.4 inches, and the spindle is 3 and 3.75, 3 and 3 eighths, standard Bridgeport size. Um, this dimension here. Is, is pretty critical, not with, I mean, within you know, a few thousands, ten thousands, it's not like super good. I, I laid this out with uh, a pair of calipers, so uh, I know people, some people will cry. I consider calipers a, a uh, expendable or consumable, I guess, because, you know, uh, unless they're the really good ones, you know, my, my freaking $400 Starrett's, no, for the, the 12 inch ones, but the cheap six inch, yeah, they, they, they're, they're okay. Um, at least the ones I've got <laughs> eye gauging, you know, 40 bucks on eBay, whatever. Uh, anyway, so we'll mount this up. Uh, we'll take this out as big as I can go without a boring head, which is 60 millimeters, because I've got a 60 millimeter hole saw. Um, and we'll punch that hole in there and then bore this out to, you know, 3.4 inches or so. Um, about, I think it's about 88 millimeters, something like that. Uh, and then uh, we'll just take the rest of it and cut it, sand it, and uh, do that. I'm not gonna, don't know exactly what size this is gonna be yet, probably four millimeter, because I got some four millimeter countersunk screws. So I got a whole bunch of them, so we'll probably do that. This piece is 5 16 or eight millimeters. It's close enough, it doesn't matter. Um, and uh, so we'll do that, just mount it in here and snug it up, but not crazy tight because it'll just bend. And I have learned from t scrapping the first part, this thing is, of course, it's thin and very flexible. So I've got a couple of little uh, stare at machinist jacks. I just put under the edge here and uh, well, they're not perfect. They work pretty good, and uh, we can snug them up to where it's a lot better. Can't go, can't make them very tight because it'll bow it. A little bowing won't hurt it though. So um, we'll put these in here. And we've got enough clearance for the bore, I believe. So I think that'll do pretty good. Just kind of line this up with a, a pointy edge finder, just statically, just set it, you know, smooth with my fingers. And let's put a drill chuck in there. 
Drill a couple holes. Hopefully we got enough room. We do. Actually, the Y is probably okay since uh, this is round number two on this part. It's pretty close. Pretty close. So we'll just move that over a hair. I think that will do. Let's see, maybe just a thousandth or two. Uh, it's pretty good. Okay, we'll zero up the DRO. Call that good. We're just going to pop our hole in here and then. Uh, actually, we'll zero that, put this back in, line up on that one, and pop our hole, and then just come back to zero. I mean, technically, I could use the bolt circle function to find this, but it doesn't have to be that close. Okay, so that's and I'm just feeling till it's lined up you can get within a few thousands pretty easy yeah I'm gonna call that good Let me get a four and a half millimeter drill. Okay, so I'm just put a spot it with that. Got a four and a half millimeter, we'll use that. Now I'm committed <laughs> to uh, our size. And sink it later because I got to get the get the screw all right and we're going to use one of these little uh, carbide tipped hole saws you can get these things dirt cheap on Amazon and eBay the Chinese but they work really well amazingly well um, I think I paid forty dollars for a six piece set um, it goes from like 15 to 60 millimeters um, we've got a six millimeter drill, a little spring to push out the, the uh, cutoff, and uh, surprising, <laughs> they work surprisingly well. I've used them, I don't know, three or four times now, uh, and they work really good. Way, way better than I expected for my little bit of money. Okay. Lock the tables. Tables. Table. <laughs> okay, we're on zero. Lock it off. We are going to run this in back gear because I have learned it is, you know, it's pretty flexible and chattery. So we are going to put a little bit of WD 40 on here. And just take our time. And although the center hole 
Well, we should have done that in high speed, which I think we will. All right. All right, now we'll go to back gear. <laughs> really well amazingly well uh, you know obviously the one thing you can't go too deep because there's just not a lot of places for the chips to go but for sheet metal oh, oh yeah that works great no problems there okay so now we're just gonna get the boring head and basically I'm gonna just bore it out till I get to the line and so I learned Trying to do this before that even though this is aluminum it doesn't like it because it's so thin and flexible it chatters really bad even with the supports under it so um, what we're gonna do is leave it in back gear and I've got the power feed uh, set up for one and a half thousandths per cut I tried three thousandths it was very unhappy. So we're just gonna go with this and uh, you know, I'll make a few passes and bring you back when we're done or close to done. some chatter it's not awful it is if you try to go faster <laughs> I've, I've learned and uh, so um, anyway and we got these holes which makes an interrupted cut that makes it noisier blah 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 anyway uh, I'll bring you back in a bit okay we're getting pretty close uh, I think and uh, I haven't measured it yet but we're looking pretty close there was, there it is, I don't want to measure that. There was a little hole in there, which is almost bored out. So let's see, where are we at here? 3.252. So we roughly got about 150,000 to go. So I've been taking 100,000 at a pass, 50,000 per side. Uh, this boring head is direct read. Can you see all this? I don't even know. Yeah, sort of, yeah. Anyway, so this one reads direct. Uh, one division is a thousandth off the diameter, so hundred thousandths on here. There's fifty thousandths depth of cut, so that'll should take us to about uh, three inches, three fifty or so. So pretty close, and it looks like my scribe line for the circle is not exactly in the center of where I drilled the hole, but it really isn't relevant. As long as the distance between that hole and that hole are the same, we're good. And I can just massage this with the grinder. Oops. And you'll hear it's much quieter now because it's closer to the supports. And not much chatter really at all. So that should be about three, three point three five. Keep in mind, we're using calipers too, which are not, you know, they're approximators. <laughs> Let's see here what we get. 3.410. So we're 
Hmm, 10,000 over. That's fine. I must have read them wrong. <laughs> that's okay. That's fine. That is perfect. It lines up just with the inside of the ring. Mostly, it's important that it clears the the uh, spindle, so or the quill. So I think we're done on this. Uh, we'll take it out and then uh, just bandsaw off most of this and uh, use the grinder and make it look acceptable. Acceptable to me, that is. So, there's our let me get a rag. So there's our thing. Here's going to be the. Anyway, this was just old scrappy stuff. That's why it's all chowdered up. Anyway, um, so this is going to be the tang. I'll draw a couple of lines on here and just put a radius in the corner so it looks nice. Bandsaw that and uh, file it and sand it. I'll bring you back, show you how it ends up. Okay, well, it almost went without a hitch. <laughs> it's pretty close. Uh, so I, I drilled a couple of holes in here to make a nice little radius. Got a little close on that one. I just did them by eye, but good enough because it's not going to really be seen. And for what I'm doing with it, it's fine. Uh, countersunk our hole, put an M4 screw in there. I actually had some 516 aluminum rod, and this one was a scrap, and it was only about that much too long, so that was nice. Didn't have to waste much. Um, cut it off. <laughs> the only problem is, when I measured this distance, you know, I had to kind of guess at it, and I missed. <laughs> Not by a lot, but I missed a little. Um, so I ended up taking a file to the inside of this, just a little. Took about a minute, <laughs> so not much. But the nice part is, is that it now it slides over here and goes right up on here. And I can snug up the little screw and it doesn't drag on the quill. So that'll be completely out of the way. And our uh, little light will get stuck on there somehow. So it's got some little tabs, they're gonna come off, and then I'll glue it or somehow adhesive it on there. And uh, and uh, then I've got a I've got to get a power supply. I've got lots of 12 volt power bricks, so I'll I'll set up a power supply and do something with the wires, make them less fragile, and uh, put it on there with a switch. But I think we're good to go, and that'll be nice because in the shadow free light, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, probably going to put a little notch in here to get the wires out of the side so that this will lay flush up against the, the bracket. But I think that's about it. So y'all have a great day and uh, we'll see you soon.